POV. It's a pivotal round and your team's down 8-9. Whichever team loses will be poor, and that's crucial at this stage of the game. But wait, you don't have enough money for a gun, but your Cypher does. So you ask him the question. You buy me Cypher? Can you say meow? No. Alright, I get you not get a mug. What? Valorant, an addicting, satisfying, and extremely aggravating game, but also really fun. Fun to the point where our one hour session turns to 3 to 8 to 12 within what feels like 10 seconds. The gun plays nice, 50 abilities flying in your face ain't good, but at the same time when your team does it, then it's the best thing ever. Regardless of all the small issues there are in Valorant, there's still a major flaw this game has that affects you every time you play from agent select all the way to 13. And to get to that flaw, you need to start with this question. Winning in Valorant takes shape in many forms. The classic first to 13 wins. 100 deathmatch you lose. 4 spike rush rounds. But competitive is the main mode. The most played mode. The best mode. But also the sweatiest mode. So yeah, you get the flame, you get the horrible plays. Never from yourself, of course. But mainly, you get no satisfaction from winning. Because a win only gives you plus 20 RR. Which means if you want that real feeling of accomplishment, well, just play 50 games. It's not that hard. The true feeling of progress in this game is ranking up. So again, if you want to feel progress and feel good about playing well, each Valorant game lasts around 30 to 45 minutes, so all you gotta do to go from silver to immortal is get 50 wins in a row with no losses. Should be really, really easy, right? Just gotta put thousands of hours at the practice tool, watch thousands of pro player VODs, master a couple characters, and finally get your immortal booster friend to carry you. Or maybe you're just good at the game. Yeah, that, that's also a factor. But even with all these measures taken, you still eventually lose a game. But at that point, you're so addicted anyway, to where if you lose, you convince yourself in every possible sense to just run it back for one more game. And that's how it starts. Let's just play one game, then boost to run it back, run a win streak, to finally, you can't add it a loss, run it back. Because in your mind, you need to counteract the loss. You need to get those points back. Because you're a silver 350 RR player, not a silver 322 RR player. But after all those games, you're just sitting there, contemplating everything. Still, and I'm moving. Which brings us to our next point. Before you hop into a stretch of games, I bet you feel like Spider-Man. You got the Spidey sense. If someone threw a rock at your forehead right now, you'd probably catch that thing. You're fast, you're nimble, but then you play five Valorant games and you're out here looking like the sloth from Zootopia. But it's not just your reaction time, your energy is completely drained, your mission of reaching gold has now cratered. Your playing Valorant stamina bar is now in the red, and regardless of what happens next, it's 4am, you spent the whole day on your computer, and you gotta sleep soon. Surely you can point out even more of the most obvious issues with Valorant in its current state, not including rank, things like the e-dating trend, the smurfs that are in nearly every game, and the toxic people. All of these things are apparent within the game, but even these flaws mask the true issue of Valorant itself, which is basically losing, and winning, and losing again, and winning again to counteract the loss. A constant cycle of rehash gunfights and results, wins, losses, plus 25, minus 60 for the day, e-dating memes, the three harbor smokes blocking you, getting judged for the fifth straight healing. Regardless of what you play Valorant for, the amount of mental fortitude and patience you need to play this game is insurmountable. Choose to win or choose to lose. That's the type rope Valorant players walk before they actually play the game. Now this all sounds pretty bad, but it doesn't have to be. Truth is, a lot of people enjoy Valorant regardless. Excluding Cop, there's the core mechanics, characters, rotating maps, and everything else that makes Valorant one of the most fun games out there right now. But one of the main ways people use to enjoy the game itself is to focus less on the rank, and instead focus more on the journey of getting better. There are some metrics of growth only you can track that's unaccounted for in the rank tab. Things like, did your aim improve? How about knowing when to jiggle peek a guy on breeze? Maybe you learned some new sober lines. Maybe a new killjoy setup. Whatever the metric is, and if you care at all of getting better at Valorant, it's all your own choice of how everything affects you. But all in all, it really does truly culminate to what the main actual point I was trying to make throughout this whole video is. Next time Cypher says meow for me, just do it and get the plus 20. All my fellas.